this graincast will look to cover a number of the assessment statements for the ventilatory system. The first one is listing the principal structures, then we're looking at outlining the functions of the conducting airways, and we will look to cross-reference the distinction between different types of muscles with respect to here and the principal structures of the ventilatory system. So here we have a cutaway of the thoracic cavity. Our structure so it begins with the, the nose. Then we've got our pharynx, larynx, trachea, our bronchus in here, and then which branches off to our right and left bronchus or our bronchi. We can also see an outline here of the lungs, but also the diaphragm. So again, let's start off. Nasal passages through here. We have our pharynx, which is basically our throat. We have the larynx, which is the first part of dense cartilage there. So this is the area if we get laryngitis and lose our voice. We have our trachea, we have our right bronchus and our left bronchus, so we would describe them as bronchi. From our left and right bronchus we have bronchioles, they're the little branches that come off those. And then at the very end of our bronchioles we have our alveoli. They're all those little grape-like things or endpoints where they expand and fill up. Over this side, we're going to look here specifically at our right lung. I'll just give that a good colour in. We have our left lung over on the other side. So here big colour. We have three very distinct lobes on the right side and our left side, which is a little bit smaller than the right, only has two lobes. It needs to take into account the heart. Um, the left lower lobe does have a slight extension to it that you would have seen on the Gunther uh, video as the lungs were being inflated. So here we have a cutaway of our alveoli, so our air sacs in here, and we can see nice and clearly the blood vessels that run through and around the outsides of the alveoli, which again in this one can be seen nicely here with an alveoli sitting off on each side. That's providing a large surface area for gaseous exchange to occur. This is a picture from the Gunther video, the red around the outside, there are blood vessels.
vessels. And the clear space, which is this bit on the inside, is our alveoli. So again, we can see here very, very large surface areas for gaseous exchange to occur. And the gaseous exchange would be oxygen from the alveoli, where it's of a high concentration, high pressure, and it would go to the blood where the oxygen is of low concentration and low pressure. So here when we're looking at the mechanics of breathing, we can see in the Gunther video still where our rib cage and sternum is being separated, so stern would be down there, separated from the thoracic cavity, then there are adhesions. And as we breathe and our rib cage expands and our shoulders rise, it increases the superior inferior length of our cavity making it greater. These adhesion, adhesions help to elongate the area. Here we have our intercostal muscle or muscles which are responsible for the expansion of our rib cage or thoracic cavity again increasing pressure so that the air will sorry decreasing pressure so that the air will move into the thoracic cavity. Here again another cutaway where we can see where our lungs sit in here with respect to the body. The diaphragm sits in here underneath the fatty deposit. We can actually see it back up here. This is the diaphragm, this dome shaped muscle there. Is a nice cutaway where we can see this the dome shaped muscle of the diaphragm in here. So when we're looking at the diaphragm, some research would indicate that it's a smooth muscle, that it's involuntary. However, other papers would indicate that it is in fact skeletal and that we do have some control over it especially when we choose to either hold our breath or to increase our respiration rate. Um, we do have control over the skeletal muscle of our diaphragm and they refer to that as being visceral. Here again, this is the lower section of our left lung. Just a diagram here that's looking at inhalation or inspiration, expiration. Here during inspiration, diaphragm has lowered. Our rib cage has expanded and moved up. By doing that, we are decreasing the pressure of the thoracic cavity, therefore the air in the atmosphere that has a higher pressure will rush to fill the lungs. When we expire, our diaphragm relaxes and rises, our rib cage drops. 
here we increase the pressure in the thoracic cavity so that it's greater than the pressure in the atmosphere and the air is breathed out. Here's just another diagram so that we can see very nicely the diaphragm as it sits at the base of the thoracic cavity with origins along the costal cartilage and on our lumbar spine.